This is a People First Radio podcast. The vision of World Bipolar Day is to bring world awareness to bipolar conditions and to eliminate social stigma. It's held each year on March 30th, the birthday of legendary artist Vincent van Gogh, who was posthumously diagnosed as likely having a bipolar condition. The collaborative research team to study psychosocial issues in bipolar disorder, known as CREST-BD, is a Canadian-based multidisciplinary collaborative network of researchers, healthcare providers, people living with bipolar disorder, their family members, and supporters. Victoria Maxwell is a mental health speaker, actor, and writer, and the CEO of Crazy for Life. She's also a member of the CREST-BD network. I've lived with bipolar disorder for a long time. I'm uh, 50 right now, and I was diagnosed when I was 25, so over half uh, half my life. Um, When I was first diagnosed, uh, I didn't really accept the uh, diagnosis. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression and going to psychotherapy, but uh, it had never been identified as bipolar disorder. And what eventually happened was I went into a manic psychosis. So um, for people that aren't familiar, psychosis is literally sort of a break with reality. So I was seeing things and hearing things and believing things that weren't there, weren't true, and uh, was taken to the hospital. And uh, even the, the surprising thing was that even after that experience, and I was told that this is, you know, this is a symptom of bipolar disorder. Um, I didn't, I didn't uh, accept that I had it. Um, there were a number of reasons. Uh, one of them was I had some pretty personally profound experiences spiritually. It felt like in um, the psychosis, and so when I did go through that experience, I felt like the whole experience was pathologized. And I felt like I had to choose sort of either it was a spiritual experience or personally profound or a mental illness. And uh, so it wasn't until I found a psychiatrist that really helped me understand that I could still have this profound experience in a psychosis, which is probably counterintuitive for a lot of people when they hear that. Um, And I could also have a mental illness. Um, I was familiar with bipolar disorder. My mom was diagnosed when I was fairly young when I was around eight and but I still never made the connection and uh, I think what I always like to let people know is that once I became very involved in my own recovery so it wasn't just the acceptance of the illness and then becoming sort of a sheep and just following instructions it was being proactive, being curious, asking questions, making sure that the treatment plan was really right for me, that was when I started to see a significant change in not only my mood and my um, mental health, but also my sense of identity, my self-esteem, my uh, confidence. And that really lent itself to feeling like I could, that I felt like I belonged in the world again. Uh, a big part of it uh, for me wasn't just the symptoms that were difficult to deal with because I went through severe anxiety and severe depression and mania, et cetera, but it was really this uh, ravaged identity that I had. Um, I, I make jokes about it because I think that's one way that we deal with difficult challenges, um, but you know, there's one thing that anybody that's been tied down to a gurney or been in a psychosis or committed to a psych ward, it's there's certain uh, experiences that only we share. And some of that is this uh, the stigma that is uh, part of mental illness and the identity that uh, is shifted. And so as I've gotten more well, I've really made bipolar disorder part of who I am, but not all of who I am. So it's it's been a long journey, uh, but it's been a, a really colorful journey because <laughs> I also ran down the street naked in a psychotic episode. So that was quite, um, um, uh, no pun intended, but titillating experience. <laughs> and um, so I was really... Um, 
it, there was a lot to come to bounce back from, and I had a lot of support. And as I started to get better, as I said, then I felt like I was able to be. I felt that I belonged uh, in the world again. And I and it, it's not that I never did, but that's I think some of the uh, damage that mental illness. Uh, reeks on a person's life is that we I at least I did anyway felt very alone and felt like I was very different than my peers and people that I knew because I didn't know anybody at the time who had been in a psych ward but when I started to feel better then what was a really important shift for me was the idea that I could actually go back to work and and have a life maybe not the same as it was before bipolar disorder but similar so I went into a, a nine to five job that gave me some stability, and at that point there, I was uh, I started to write about my experiences. My background's in acting, and uh, my passion is actually in acting and writing and speaking and things like that. So it uh, I didn't know where it would lead to, uh, but eventually it led to doing one person shows about my own experience and sharing it so that other people might feel comfortable sharing their own story. This is People First Radio. I'm Kevin. Crest BD is a Canadian based multidisciplinary collaborative network of researchers, healthcare providers, people living with bipolar disorder, their family members, and supporters. Victoria Maxwell is a mental health speaker, actor, and writer, and the CEO of Crazy for Life. She's also a member of the Crest BD network. World Bipolar Day is held each year on March 30th with a goal to bring world awareness to bipolar conditions and to eliminate social stigma. The theme for World Bipolar Day in 2017 is passion. It's really interesting to, to hear that uh, word and that connection because I think um, the mood states that are associated with bipolar disorder are very passionate. Even depression, although it's not passion in terms of overflow of energy it's it's the intensity of the depression which can be difficult to withstand and mania of course can be sort of the fireworks of emotions but when i see it in terms of a healthy passion sort of what is what is uh bipolar disorder brought me closer to it's on a whole range of areas in my life both professionally and personally and it ties in with my work um, so I, I speak at conferences uh, and do workshops and perform my shows, and, but I also do mental health coaching. And so there's a the, the the passion that it seems to have ignited is to find find the commonality that I have with uh, other individuals that have mental illness. It certainly ignited a passion for uh, demystifying the experience of mental illness, not even demystifying or dismantling the stigma, which I think is a indirect result, but I identify more with someone that wants to help people really have a, an experience, per se, of what it's like maybe to have depression or uh, an anxiety disorder or be in a psychotic episode. And I, because I think from that, people, it engenders compassion and understanding and if anything, that's what I'm really passionate about, is about creating a kinder world. Where I feel like I can make my mark is by maybe writing some of the misunderstandings that people have or the fears. And I do it, and I do it a lot with humor because I think it, it makes it more comfortable. And I think if learning can be done with laughter, um, it's more valuable learning. Uh, people remember it longer. Um, especially storytelling in particular has a, a particular kind of resonance for people. Um, I think because we've, you know, been read stories as, as children or read, read stories uh, by, by our loved ones to us or we've read books that have stuck with us and there's something about the narrative. The passion that I find is about also just encouraging people to uh, find their voice and find their story. So I do these... Um, workshops called, or play shops, I actually call them, uh, Catalysts for Courage and Creativity. And they're really about helping people sort of find their story, find their voice, uh, and find their passion. And, you know, as I think about even 
just the word passion, a lot of it has to do with creativity. And I don't mean that in the uh, traditional sense of dancing or singing or playing music. It, it incorporates that, but it's a, it's a way of being in the world where every uh, choice that a person makes can be creative from. It, it's being mindful of the simplicity of how you put a plate down on a, on a table or set a place setting, uh, what you choose to make for dinner. Um, all these things can be really uh, creative. And the interesting thing with bipolar disorder is that I think, be, and I don't, I mean, I'm part of the Crest research team, and I've done a lot of, one of the plays was uh, sort of um, commissioned by Crest, uh, and we did research around that. But I don't know the the mechanics of what it means when a person has sort of the mood swings that are part of, intrinsically part of uh, bipolar disorder, but I feel like it lends itself to creativity. It lends itself to having empathy and compassion because we go from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs, if you at least have bipolar one, like I do. So it means that I end up relating to people uh, in a way that I probably never would have had I never had bipolar disorder. And it certainly helps in the art that I do, being able to write certain characters and write uh, certain scenes. And ironically, what I find is that there's a, there's a universality of depression and mania in everyone's life. It won't be to the same clinical degree. It won't be where it interferes with someone's functioning, like when I have uh, a bout of depression or mania where it might disable me for a number of days. But we all share discouragement and we all share high levels of excitement and there's something really wonderful when we find that we're more connected than different going back to that idea of wanting to uh, create a kinder world I think that that's one way of doing it and so bipolar disorder has not only fueled my creativity and fueled my uh, interest in what I write about but it's fueled my my profession and my vocation. I wouldn't say that I would want anybody to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder or go through the things I did, but the gifts that I've gotten from it um, have certainly been something that I'm really grateful for. Victoria Maxwell is a mental health speaker, actor, and writer, and the CEO of Crazy for Life. You can find her online at victoriamaxwell.com. She's also a member of the CrestBD network. CrestBD stands for Collaborative Research Team to Study Psychosocial Issues in Bipolar Disorder. You can find them online at crestbd.ca. People First Radio is a community media project of Vancouver Island Mental Health Society and produced in Nanaimo, British Columbia. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of Vancouver Island Mental Health Society or its broadcast partners. Listen to our podcasts online. Just Google People First Radio to find our webpages.